and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and part two of our Wingnut Wings Gotha UWD build. Um, at the end of the video there will be a link that will take you to the playlist for um, the Gotha and in there you'll be able to find um, the first part where we basically talked about what paints we were going to use, what other products we're going to be using and what the plan was for the build. So that'll give you an idea and we're going to start the build in earnest in this video. Now first um, thing that I've actually done is had a play with um, the decals that we're planning to use. These are um, from the same company as um, I've supplied me um, with these belts when I say supplied I've bought them. So um, the HGW uh, company I've got their um, harnesses and we use it or hoping to use their wooden decals uh, and you can see here I've been playing around with putting them on um, how they react to microsol and microset um, varnishing them and so on so um, this is all done um, one of the things that I was querying in my mind is substrate color um, so uh, I think I'm gonna go with the sand It was important to get my head round how the decals behaved and colours and that sort of stuff before we got stuck on with build. So we've done that, we're going to go with the sand. The other thing that I need to do is remind myself of the process of painting a propeller. Now I plan to do them in oil paints, which is how I've done them previously, but I've not done one for uh, a good few years. So there is some spares in there, some propellers we don't use. So uh, one of the first things we'll be doing is having a play with painting a propeller. Um, there's several stages and I need several days for each, each layer of paint to dry so um, we can have a good mess around because ultimately we won't put the propellers on towards the end of the build most likely um, after we've done rigging and the like. So um, that's a good thing to um, refresh my memory on so we'll be having a look at that at some point but right now we're actually starting the build. So as we go to page one and page two, we're focused on the cockpit. And these two pages get you to this assembly. So that's what we're gonna focus on um, to start plan with. is to get everything sort of built up for this and then we'll paint all the parts and assemble. Um, there's gonna be quite a lot of the wood decals being used in this um, all being well. Um, you do have to flip backwards and forwards a little bit because we've got assembly instructions and paint instructions and then we've got other paint instructions so a little bit of cross-referencing um, just helps even though some of the instructions appear to be duplicates so uh, you take this the control wheel for example um, it tells you that you need K and you need N in terms of the paint colors and when you get here it shows you that bit's K and that bit's N. So you're not you're not 100% clear from that which bits are which. Uh, so you do want to cross-reference um, a little bit. Anyway, um, should, uh, should look really nice when done. So possibly the most complicated part of the build right at the start, um, but that's all good. And then we've got control cables and things to think about. I don't know whether they're different colours or not, but I'm going to assume they're not. But we're not going to be able to connect those until we've got it all mounted up so um, we need to have a look at that when we've done it and and whether we're putting stuff on now uh, and leaving it dangling and then cutting it to length or or what we're doing so yeah lots to think about as always but we're going to start with these two bits here uh, which are going to form the floor pan. So that's part G21, and um, I think A37. Okay, first part, um, I've almost finished cleaning it up. One thing that I'm seeing is a little bit of flash in these grills here. Um, so we're just going in with um, a scraper and taking those down. that will stand out 
like you wouldn't believe when we put some paint on it. So I'm just going to finish cleaning them up and then we'll have a look at fit. So I've cleaned up the second part now as well and I'm just checking fit. Fit is good. We have a small gap um, but there's a bulkhead going on there so I suspect it's hidden under the bulkhead and won't be visible. So that's a nice bit of engineering. Um, uh, as far as this goes, it's all being painted the same colours so that the, the actual floor... Um, of the pulpit and the cockpit all being in the in the natural wood and then the metalwork um, all being painted in this sort of um, greeny colour. So I think we, we can glue these together and it's not going to affect the ability to paint it. So let's do that. There we go. That should be uh, more than sufficient. So that is our first part built on our gopher. Okay, our next two parts are cleaned up, which um, is this um, control column um, and a base that it fits into. So we need to put that in from uh, the underside just make sure we face it the right way so I think the idea is that this should move around and then we've got some location pins which will make sure this is in the correct position yeah and we can actually engineering is really good so this this will move it has sufficient friction friction to hold its place I ultimately will end up gluing it into place once I've decided on a position uh, we've got some rigging to do around it, so we don't want it moving about when we're trying to rig it. So we'll have some rigging coming down from underneath and through these little holes at the bottom. And then from this point to that point. So, uh, yeah, interesting. But they have kindly put little location points in for all the rigging. So that is very nice. So we will have to paint those separately. We can't glue those in at all so that's my next two pieces done right then this piece is the piece that's bothering me the most i can paint this but this board is a board of wood um, and my original plan of putting decals down i sort of have stepped back of, back from a little bit because of this piece and how difficult it will be to put a decal on there and then at the same time it's not even going to be easy to paint that with wood effect it'd be a lot better if all of these were separate parts that you stuck onto a board full of holes <laughs> that, that would have made my life so much easier but that's not where we are so uh, I'm, I'm sort of I'm sort of thinking, can I make a mask um, so that I can, you know, out of um, some tape, cut it all out so it sits, lift it off, put it on a decal, cut the decal out so that I can create a decal for it. So I'm going to try that, and that's going to be um, the decision maker for me in terms of whether um, it is possible for me to use decals throughout or whether I'm I'm uh, painting um, so let's see how that gets on
put in your uh, sanding sticks up a little bit is really helpful when you've got these tiny little areas that you need to get into. If you don't have a little scraper like this, you can make your own from uh, Tamiya Photo Etch. So, um, so the frame that your Tamiya Photo Etch comes in, it's really strong, rigid stuff. And you can just cut that into strips and make your own scrapers. Okay, um, I have just primed our first parts. Um, as you can see, we're going with um, white because that's going to help uh, with the, the pale colour that we're putting down next. Now, um, I'm, I'm actually going with this MIG New Wood. It's um, slightly less yellow than the sand that I'd used on the trials. If I just, just show you. Um, I'd, I'd used sand before, but you can see how this is... Uh, just that bit paler, um, and I think that's gonna just help a little bit, especially when we do this um, floor, because I'm gonna do this floor paler. Now, it's interesting when you look at the instructions, um, the instructions call out painting this dark wood in the same as the bulkheads and the internal surfaces of the cockpit. But when you look at their final um, image of the uh, um, in the paint instructions, as you look down through into the cockpit, this is paler. And I've got to say, I really like the idea of that contrast. And it doesn't doesn't feel right that this would be dark wood like the rest of it, um, wh where all the footfall is going to be. So uh, I, th I think. Um, I'm going to go with a, a paler wood on the bottom here. Um, so yeah, and I don't I don't know yet whether I'm going to hand paint it or whether I'm going to do uh, decals. Uh, not really sure. But to start with, we're going to do everything in the um, well, anything that's going to be wood in this light wood, and then we can seal all that, and that becomes the basis then of either. Uh, putting decals down or putting um, oil paints on or what, whatever we're going to do. Um, new wood from MIG, which is 37, um, to lay down um, a base colour um, for our wood effects. And I've got a little bit of touch-up to do in places, uh, but effectively that's all pretty much done now. Pale wood, whereas everything else in the cockpit is going to be dark wood. So I've got some decals and I want to try them out. I've already had a bit of a play with the shelf and it worked okay. Um, I think these are better decals than the dark wood ones I've got, to be honest. They're a bit stronger. So I'm going to see if we can do this. We'll have a go and if it all goes wrong, we sand it down and start again.
okay, the most difficult part of putting these decals on is actually going to be this section here. Um, so the process of putting the decals on, letting them dry so they go tight over the grills and then cutting them out, that's worked great for this and that. And we've got setting solution drying um, after having trimmed away the um, material and then we'll just check that there's no uh, decals knocking about afterwards, any ex excess uh, decal afterwards. And then we can start painting in the details. So here, we've got this um, shape, this round shape, which includes uh, a little lip that you can just you can just see there, um, a real low level. Um, and it's such a fine detail that actually my masking tape is probably hardly going to notice it. But the plan is to mask this, cut out a mask, put it on the decal, cut the decal out. Um, I think the most logical way of doing it is to do it in three sections. So two um, quarter panels and then one half panel. That's going to make it a lot easier to um, manipulate this. And it, it, it could be that we make three um, masks and then lay those down on the decal and cut um, one decal. Uh, with a split across here, um, I don't know. So it depends on how well this masking goes. So that's the next job, cut um, some masking tape and then start cutting around it. So just gonna measure how much we need. So the total width of that is 22. So we need 11 to get to a halfway point. So 11, and if we treat those holes as the natural join then we're at what's that 13 11 by 13 so let's cut that out Okay, I think I'm happy with that. So I will do the other one and then I'll come back to you when we're ready to put it on the deck. I have cut my masks. It's gone quite well, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, I've just marked up um, some location points. So the, the edges here, which is just to help um, get these in the right place. Um, uh, so we can put these on the decal now. And hopefully, we'll be um, able to cut one single decal out. So, let's see how we get on with that. Now, we can simply cut this out, and uh, we should have a decal that largely fits pretty well first time, which will be nice. So I'm going to cut the basic decal out and then we'll trim some bits and pieces up. plan that went better than I could have hoped for so last little bit of um, decals to put down here uh, and then we can think about some colouring on it right so now that our decals are down um, the next step on this is to just seal it all again with um, some uh, gloss varnish so I'm going to give it another coat of gloss varnish let that dry and harden overnight 
And then we're going to do a little bit of shading on some of these panels um, and, and hopefully bring out some of the detail uh, a little bit um, more. And then we can move on to some of the other parts that start going into here and the detail painting. <laughs> As much as I don't like working with Tamiya paints for brush painting particularly, um, you can get by um, just by making sure I have to concentrate and change my style of painting. Because normally I sort of do lots of little brush strokes and fill it in uh, and Tamiya paint doesn't like that so I have to do a single pass and let it dry and then do another another pass. Uh, and so I'm I, I probably over thin the paint to accommodate me doing that. So I have to do several coats. So it's much more time consuming way of, of brush painting than if I was using well, anybody else's paints. I could not find a direct match for this colour from anybody else that makes um, good acrylic paints. So I'm a bit stuck with using the Tamiya paint for, for this, but it's the only colour that I'm having to use for Tamiya. So this is um, um, XF76, which is um, Imperial Japanese Navy Grey Green, which is the recommended colour um, in the instructions. Oh, it is hard work. And the risk of getting an uneven surface with uh, Tommy paint is much higher than well, anybody else's. But we are where we are, and it's going down okay. Not as, as well as I'd like, but it's going down okay. So we are getting there. And I don't want to rush it. completeness and to make sure that um, everything looks um, as it should do. I am painting the underside of the grills um, and anything that might be visible as you look through so I'm not worrying too much about the quality um, of this as long as it is um, a nice even layer um, I'm not going to worry about perfection because won't really be seen but just in case um, 
uh, you can see it against the, the darkness of the uh, fuselage once it's closed up. So you never know how light's going to fall. So it's worth just spending a moment to do that extra. Also, when you're brushing with Tamiya paint, it's always worth keeping a little bit of the thinner to hand so that you can give your brush a little bit of a rinse every now and then because um, it, it, it clogs your brush up. Um, the paint starts drying quite quickly on your bristles so your working time is, is not as good as it is with other paints so you do need to keep your brush clean and, uh, and fresh and just keep remembering to put a bit more thinner in occasionally because the thinner flashes off fairly quickly um, so it does um, thicken up whilst you're um, doing a long painting session like this. Well, that's our details painted in with the XF76. So I'm just going to wait for that to um, dry off. I'm just going to go around and make sure um, that I've not missed anything. It's a little bit difficult um, to see where this paint's gone down. Um, and then um, we'll have a look at what the next job is, which is probably um, a bit of a panel line wash. Um, and I also want to just finish off the presentation of the wood. Okay, when I painted the um, base colour uh, on top of the uh, white primer, which was our old wood colour, um, I, I did um, change the hue slightly on some of the panels. And you can see that some of the panels look a little darker um, than others. So this is a particularly light one. Uh, when we airbrushed this, we just didn't put quite as much paint down. And then this is a darker one because we actually went over and put an extra coat on and, and darkened it up. And you can see that we've we've done that in, in a couple of places. Now, some of the panels, I'm happy with the colour, but I do uh, want to just change it up a little bit on some of the other panels. So it looks like it was made from different pieces of wood being brought together. So what I want to do is just put a different hue on one or two of the panels and to do that um, I'm going to use this uh, crystal orange uh, from uh, MIG and we'll just give it a, a little coating and that'll just change the hue a little so, bit. We only need a tiny amount, this is straight from the bottle, it's not thinned in any way and we're just going to lightly brush it over the surface want to keep it nice and thin because all we're doing is changing the hue ever so slightly. Now this will need a good couple of hours to dry before we can do anything further in this area such as pin washers but you can see it it gives you that that sort of effect of um, old varnishes that used to yellow um, so it's quite a nice little effect actually um, so that's just going to help um, give me a, a different shade between this panel here and this panel here so this was um, just one good layer of uh, the, the base color paint with the decal on top so was this one so it's this breaks those two up this one had um, an extra layer on to darken it so i've got three different shades just by um, adding this um, crystal uh, orange over the top so it makes a nice little difference and we can do the same with these little panels here so you can make um, a difference between the panels and these sort of wood buttons here and just 
change things up a little bit. And if you want to deepen it, you can put a second coat on. And the more layers you put on, the more saturation of the colour that you have. Okay. We use the same product, but the um, crystal red rather than the crystal orange. We can, again, change the hue of that uh, paint to look something uh, uh, a bit more cherry-like in terms of a, a different wood. So... I'm just going to put a little bit on this baton. Now it looks quite stark to start with, but uh, when that dries, that should look really quite nice. Right, I'm going to leave it at that. I think I'm happy with how my wood's looking. Um, so we're going to let that dry. And then the next thing we can do is um, some little pin washers. And then uh, we're ready for um, putting some more parts on and even putting a little bit of the first riggings on. Okay, next thing I want to do is just add a little bit of definition to these parts and some shadow and uh, what have you. So I'm using um, what's called Africa Corpse Wash. Uh, it's uh, an enamel wash Megamo. Uh, it's part of their um, uh, washers range. And I'm using that as um, basically as a panel line wash rather than a general wash. And we're just going to go in with a fine brush and put small amounts in the areas where we want to bring a little bit of definition. Just going to bring our details out a little bit. You can see difference that's making already. I'm not going to put the same wash on the painted uh, metal components, we're just doing this on the wood. And we can use it to uh, add a little bit of shadow. So you can see there we build up a little bit in the corners. You can see the difference between the two, and obviously it lessens itself as it dries off a little bit. Now we're going to have a bulkhead going in here, so I'm going to follow that line. Um, this section here won't be seen. I'm going to follow that line and put my, um, which is the line of the deck ledge, and just put that in now.
Right, I'll carry on and show you what that looks like when it's done. Another, another thing we can do just to add to the um, wood effect is just pick out some of the wood grain using the wash. And that'll just help add a little bit of definition to some of the uh, some of the board there. So it'll be subtle um, when it dries. I'm not going to do it on all of the panels. But these ones are quite light. I also want to pick out any fastener heads that may be in the wood, and there's, there's several of them. And that's just going to highlight their positions and add some definition to everything. Again, corners and edges, I'm just darkening up a little bit. And anything we don't like, we can just remove. Right, so I've finished going around with our um, Africa Corpse Wash, which is uh, MIG 1001. Um, and what we've done is we've picked out um, all of the edges, uh, any fastener detail of which is quite a bit dotted about, uh, the edges up against anything that's, that's metal, uh, or indeed where there's any steps, where there might be a little collection of dirt or shadow we've gone in there. On a couple of panels we've highlighted the grain a little bit and I have to say on camera it looks a lot more um, stark than it does in, in real life. Um, it's it's hardly noticeable and when we make put the uh, fuselage halves around it and it gets enclosed it'll become a lot, a lot darker um, as well so that'll lessen the effect as well. So uh, I'm really happy with this. Um, last thing that I want to do is have a look at putting a little bit of shadow on some of the metalwork elements. I want to use a different colour for that. Um, so I'm going to use um, um, panel line wash, uh, deep brown. It's going to be sympathetic to the overall feel of the completed piece, um, um, whilst giving me um, some further definition on some of these metal parts and um, just contrasting it subtly, hopefully. So let's crack on with that. Okay, so we're just going to go in, same sort of process, anywhere where we might have a little bit of shadow or dirt collection or anything like that, just highlight the detail. We are going to have some rigging lines going over some of this, um, but it doesn't capture, uh, or it doesn't be in contact with all of it, so it's worth uh, just highlighting everything.
There's some really nice subtle welding seam, which I've got to be honest, I hadn't spotted until I put um, the paint on. I didn't even see it when we uh, when we primed it. That's how subtle it is. There we go. That's looking better already. Putting a little wash on is probably the best weathering trick you can learn. Now you can see the difference between the two grills, it really does make detail pop out. couple of latches on. This is the little door that's open to uh, drop bombs out. There's a little proboscis at the front of the aircraft and basically they just open the hatch and hand drop the bomb through it. don't think it did a lot of actual aerial bombing. I think uh, it was mainly reconnaissance and surveillance work that this air, particular aircraft did. done. One last thing that's occurred to me while I was doing this is where we've got two latches that's likely to have scraped the paint so we could do with just putting a couple of little uh, metalized scratches on that plate cover so let's do that. Completes the first part of the first step which is to join these two pieces together. Quite a bit of work just to get those together, but I'm really happy with how this is looking. Um, I think, um, yeah, that's exactly what I had in my mind. <laughs>
amount of rigging that we need to do um, on these um, first items that we've put in. So uh, and to do that, I need to prepare my uh, rigging line. I'm using a point, um, 12 millimeter rigging line, which is slightly smaller than what's recommended in the instructions, but um, because this is a uh, rigging line, um, fishing line, it, it'll be um, perfectly fine. Um, now the line I've got is actually sort of um, an orangey red colour, so um, what I'm doing is I'm just going to um, blacken it using a sharpie. So just hold one end in a crocodile clip um, and then that allows me to um, hold it tight through the large hole in the bottom of the crocodile tip and we can just go over it with the sharpie and make sure it's uh, all nice and black before we do any rigging with it. So we'll give it a few minutes to dry um, and whilst it's drying I can get out my um, turnbuckle tubes ready for the rigging. Mm -hmm. 